welcome to Ed's Garage. This is a follow-up video. My first video that I posted was regarding a heat-related failure I was having on my 2008 GMC Yukon XL Denali. Uh, and in that episode, uh, whenever I was towing, and only when I was towing, and then came to a stop where I was at idle, low RPM of 650, 700 RPMs, the truck would die. Um, so wound up finding out that that was a failing crank position sensor. Got that replaced. Since then we've gone and put on uh, close to a thousand miles while towing with the vehicle. So pretty confident that we have the issue addressed. What I don't know is what is changing and how much more heat is the engine uh, producing when I'm towing. The coolant level, I constantly watch that and it stays the same straight up uh, around 195, 200 degrees, but obviously something was different that that crank position sensor would only fail um, when towing and at a low idle. So obviously uh, once the engine's very warm, you come to a stop like that, the oil pressure is going to drop down the truck has, at the time it had 137,000 miles, so the oil pressure is probably not what it used to be. I suspect I have to drop the oil pan and replace the O-ring on the pickup tube down there to get a little bit better pressure, but I'm still above what a LS requires. I think the spec for an LS is at 1,000 RPMs. You need to be 22, 23 PSI, um, and I think I'm over 30. At that. So regardless, I wanted to go see, you know, what's going on with the engine. So the project that we're going to do today is to install an engine oil temperature gauge uh, in a standalone pod up on the upper left of the console. And I've got everything uh, set up here. I thought I'd start here in the kitchen, little workspace, and do a little prep work in here. And I'll walk you through the products we have in... Uh, what this is going to cost and take to get this project done. So, so let's do first that. things first is to grab the gauge. I went with a glow shift oil temperature gauge. Uh, just went and bought it right off their website. They uh, have three versions. They have a white, a black, and then a black tint. The only difference I could tell between the black and the black tint was with the tinted one when everything was powered off you could not see the gauge the scale face um, and on my truck dash you can so I went with the black version now I went with just this single gauge pod that I'll pop on the front left corner of the dash and when I first got the gauge and went to slide it into that opening for the gauge pod, the rounded edge, let's see if I can show you that, the rounded edge of the gauge would just barely slip in the opening and that would be it. It wouldn't go anywhere past that. So uh, naturally I was thinking, okay, I'll go get my Dremel and put on a sanding drum and we'll open that up some. But don't do that. Go, uh, if you have a heat gun, or go grab uh, the significant other's hair dryer and just apply some heat to the face of that. I used uh, my heat gun probably 40, 45 seconds to the face of that, and then the gauge just slid in with no tension at all. And I went and held it in place. I oriented it just a little bit past 12 o'clock and the reason for that is the gauge won't sit flat on the dash the dash has a little contour so I took that into account so that when it's sitting uh, on a little bit of a contour like that the glow shift logo is horizontal so um, that is the gauge and the pod all put together the gauge comes with a two foot wiring harness and you have five leads in there. We'll go through and talk through what those leads are. It also comes with some brackets that you can use to screw it down and a little bracket for the back of it 
with the barrel screws so that you can go and attach that to the bracket but in all reality this is so snug uh, it's not going to go anywhere so the other thing I did is instead of using the two foot wiring harness and having more connections that I have to solder to extend is you're checking out they offer you a wiring harness where everything under the dash is three feet and then the sensor wires going to the sending unit are nine feet so I went and picked that up and the sending unit is right here so the sending unit is a 1 8 NPT thread and then you've got uh, they have some simple connectors here to make it weather tight little uh, I'll call those butt connectors just to slip together or barrel connectors is probably more appropriate um, I didn't want to go with that I wanted to have something more like OEM so I picked up some Delphi weather pack and we'll go over that as well but for the gauge here here's what we're looking at the gauge was the middle item so your $55 for the gauge $7 for the extended wiring and then $13 for the pod holder so altogether about $80 to get the wiring etc now most LS's at least that I know of don't have a spot for you to put in a engine oil temperature sensor alright I had to leverage the technology of time travel or maybe just video editing to bring you a little update that after I started preparing I saw a flaw in my plan uh, and have diverted some originally I was planning on using this single port bypass adapter um, for the oil cooler bypass lines and put that on only when I spun in the sensor I could see it was going to stick through and further investigation before I went and pulled that panel off showed me that there's two distinct ports available on the oil pan and that would be dead center hitting the aluminum block of the oil pan so that wouldn't work. I reached out to ICT who uh, was more than happy to help. They agreed that wouldn't work and they recommended what I go with is this adapter where the sensor would go and mount on the top so it's a little bit thicker of an adapter doesn't want to thread there we go we get that going but I'm only halfway in and hopefully you can see there that the sensor is already bottoming out and I still have quite a ways to go uh, so I reached out to them they were rather nice I bought these on Amazon via their store they said they'd refund that one since that was a recommendation and what they recommended is I change location and go to the front of the engine driver's side front of the engine it's going to be right under the power steering pump is a Torx plug um, where this M16 to 1 8 adapter will go in and that's a more common place they said to pick up a secondary oil pressure or in this case uh, temperature so I think this is a 16 17 dollar adapter comes with a little aluminum crush washer um, so this is what we're going to go with to install it does appear that I'm still going to bottom out and not go all the way in so I'll back off a thread or two um, so we'll be relying solely on thread sealant and in the next minute or so if you hear anything about o-rings to go on this temperature sensor you're never going to bury that shoulder into the thread so ignore anything about o-rings but we're hoping to button this up today I had mentioned that I wanted the weather tight connection so also via okay so here we go I want to just inside here get the weather make connector we're gonna snip off 
what we have here that came from Glow Shift and put on the WeatherMate connector. So I'm going to have to put on the cheating aids here. And we will snip off these old connectors. I'll come all the way up and get some of the heat shrink. So I'm up against the metal crimp that they had there. So we have that off. Now with these, I'm not going to do a full weather pack tutorial here, but uh, there's plenty of those out there. They tell you to um, strip off about 5.5 millimeters, plus or minus half a millimeter. These automatic strippers at the bottom setting here are just, the, the bottom setting's a quarter inch, which is just about six millimeters. So we're going to use that along with the stop that's built in to get that six millimeter. So we'll get that right in there. Do that strip. And then do that one more time. Okay, we have that. So I'm gonna twist those ends together. And as I said, the uh, I've got these green seals, which are for 18 to 20 gauge. The wire itself is a 24 gauge, so I might choose to put some RTV on. These are sliding on pretty easily. And then... Once I've got that, so I want to put the smaller of the two connectors on the sensor end and as you look at it and they slide together, this is the male end, this is the female end obviously, and they say that the female plugs go into the male fitting. So we want to go here and grab two female plugs and we'll just snip those off uh, right here. That's one. That's two. And I did go and buy a uh, off-market crimp tool for these. You get the crimp tool and an extractor. Um, and I've done a test fit. They come out pretty good, but I do want to uh, put a little solder on these afterwards. So I've never used flux for soldering, but there's a first time for everything. We'll just put a little bit on those pins so that as the wire is sitting there, the solder will draw down to it. So there's one, we'll do that again. It's a brand new thing of flex, because again, I've never used flex before, but it seems to be a best practice. So we'll go get that in there. All right, so we're all set there. So as far as the crimping goes, what you want to do is Pull your connector right to the edge. Go ahead and get that right to it and you'll see that the wire fits in there. There's two prongs there. Let me get this one out of the way. And the one that I choose is number four. Lined up perfect there for number four. Let's go and try this again. wire in there and there we go we have a good crimp on the wire and now I go push the sleeve all the way in and then I use the number five that I was mistakenly using before Let me get that bent over a little bit first
and we've got a good crimp on that one so we're still going to go and solder it but let's move on to the next one so again we've got it all soldered I want to get into the number four opening again Get the wire put in there. Pull it back to right there. Okay, we got a good double crimp. Same thing, we'll push these two ends over. And then we get into the number five opening. We are good there. So, okay, so after a quick setup here, we're just going to drop a little bit of solder in those two uh, for safekeeping. All right, that's one. Nice and simple. Let's get the other one in the holder. All right, and there's number two. So we have those all soldered up. Let me unplug the iron. Okay. So at this point, those are ready to be gently inserted into the connector doesn't matter which one goes where so just go ahead and give it a push you heard a nice click there we'll get this one in here just take a double look yep all happy okay got a good click there the pins are all the way up and then we simply go and close the back of the connector all's good. So now about the only remaining prep work that we can do is we'll get this positioned into the plate here. Okay, even with a neat clean surface, work surface here, I went and put the soldering iron over the O-rings that I was looking for. So as I had mentioned, these are fluorine rubber uh, that I picked up and again just uh, a double precaution here. These are rated to 300 degrees, so we're going to get one of these out. And if anybody wants to do this job, instead of going and buying a massive pack of weather pack connectors, a flooring washer, etc., just reach out to me. I've obviously got extras that will last me 20 years, and something like 8 10 bucks can go and set you up with the connectors, the pins, a uh, fluorine o-ring to get on here and that way everybody's not going and spending fifty dollars to use two three dollars worth of stuff so I've got the o-ring on there nice fit I'm just going when in doubt take the cap off okay that gives us uh, nice amount. Go and get that started in here. And we get about that far and the threads are starting to get a little bit tight. Glow shift says it's 14 millimeters. It is. That's it. We're uh, 
all prepped. This is ready to screw on when we get the car jacked up and then we'll pull the wire and get the mating wire off to this. Okay, so at this point what I want to do is get the gauge put in place and pull the wiring through to the engine compartment. So uh, let me get the steering wheel lowered here. Oh, hang on. Okay, so as I mentioned, I want to go up in this corner, and you can see that the dash slopes off a little bit, so I've accounted for that with the way I've oriented the Glow Shift logo there. So what we need to do is open up the area, the front half of the dash, closest to the engine compartment pops up in the ambient light sensor is there so I've had this up before so what we're going to do is we're going to move this gauge out of the way and use just a little plastic trim tool here there we go so we've got uh, that's probably just enough there there's little uh, pins there, but I just need a little bit to fish my wire through. So what I'm going to do, this is going to be difficult to show you guys the wiring. Um, I'm going to start from the engine side here. So the first thing, I took off this little corner brace so I could get at it. And what I've chosen to do is pull the wire through that main harness grommet. You can see I have the orange weed whacker line coming through it right now that I'm going to use as a fish tape. So what I did was I just used a uh, stiff piece of metal, basically a yard marker when the utilities come through. I pushed one of those through and broke a little hole through the rubber grommet and was then able to go and fish this uh, fishing line through. So we're going to pull that up. We're going to connect into this box for our three power connections. And then underneath, There's, we'll pull this trim piece off. And you can see all the way back in there where that main harness goes through and I've got the little piece of uh, trim line there that we're going to use as that fish tape. So I'm going to start with the wire up here on the gauge, get that all pulled through, and then uh, we'll pull it from the driver's interior compartment into the engine compartment. And the way I've set this up for fishing it, we start with one single wire that's going to tape to the orange uh, trim line. Then we go to two, so there's the two sensor wires. And then after that, I slowly go up and add a third wire, then a fourth, then a fifth, and then the sixth, so that instead of pulling them all through at once, each additional wire is hitting a different spot so that's how I'm all prepped to go and pull this through okay I've got updates so the uh, gauge is wired up in the back and it's got two-sided tape there holding it in place so in order to get the wires in pop out this little plug here once that's out you've got a seven millimeter bolt that's under there so remove that 7mm bolt and then go and take your 
a pillar trim panel prop it out and let it hang you've got speaker wire and other things so just let it hang there but you want to do that so that you can lift up this panel the front one and once you do that about dead center of the steering column you're going to find a path that can go down for you and get under the dash so we did that pulled all the wires and you can see here um, one thing I would say is don't waste your money on the extended wiring harness because that's as far as it got me I still need to get this through the firewall and into the um, powerhouse there the electric junction box so I'm gonna have to go and pick up some real thin wires and splice them on the sensor wires were longer so they are already pulled through and as I had mentioned I don't have the light on here but we used where the main harness was coming through have that pulled through so once I lengthen the other wires I'll just tape them to this pull it all through and then we go make our connection so that's it for uh, now have to go get some wire okay so quick update my uh, roll of 18 gauge wire came from Amazon so as you can see the original leads for the sensor the green and the black are plenty long enough but the new wires I had to go and pull through and we're going to have to substitute red uh, off the gauge cluster will be blue coming out here. All right, and then up close, coming out of that grommet, we have all six wires. I'm going to put them into a wire loom where we're going to have probably six inches of wire loom there. Then break out the two signal wires. Uh, into a separate wire loom and the rest will come up into this box so that's those coming up and then I'll just give you a quick glance at how we are inside the truck right now so inside you can see I've just got the rolls I'm gonna pull them uh, all the way through so that the ends are here and once the ends are here I'll go and solder them on to the gauge wires and then pull it and whatever is left after I make the hood connections will get rolled back up that's all for now okay so sorry that uh, I didn't do much but I'm sure everybody knows how to cut water and wire and solder so you can see I've got the three connections made there in the box and I ran the ground up right there you can see it there's a bracket there that is a good ground so I pulled that and then for now I have everything in a plastic loom so that's protecting it and then I have another plastic loom for the sensor wire and until I'm ready to get the sensor installed I've got that just tucked up here for now so as far as the circuits and where they were made I had come out with the test light previously I will uh, insert this picture here but uh, that should be all the proper connections okay so I'm hoping I can take you along with me here what I've done so far I've got the, the left front jacked up so I can slide under it and I've removed the plastic skid shield that's there let's go on down and see if I can show you what our target is alright let's see if I can show you this behind the steering rack if I go and zoom in nope I gotta get up right there I think that's the port that we're looking for so that's where we want to pull out and put in the adapter okay we are halfway done I think I am showing the port right now 
that is removed so now we have to spin in the adapter I put some thread sealant on it and then after that the sensor okay so lighting's not the best but it's in so at this point I just need to finish the oil change and plug that in okay we are all done all that's left is to put the covers back on and put some oil in it and go for a test drive so you can see that I tied the wire for the sensor right to the power steering return line to have it all in BX comes up I was able to get it into that big loom and then again it stays in BX all the way to the back of the power box where it splits off with the wires that went into the power box so power box that's how that all came out so we'll be back at you uh, probably in a few hours here when I'm ready to go for a test drive okay all right so we're all done and uh, it's the next day two days later actually and we are going to start on our first road trip where we're going to be putting on 140 miles and get a good baseline as to uh, what engine oil temperature should be you can see I've chosen the green LED um, it's start up we stay under the low setting of 100 but you can toggle through these reds not a choice that blue is a little too blue for the dash lime green purple a light blue that one's not too bad but I think the green is closer dark blue I think this is a setting that yep it changes through all seven colors blue and back to green alright so we're going to take some data points so that we know what normal operating temperature is and then we'll wrap up the video okay so time to wrap up this project this is Tuesday and over the weekend we did take the Denali on a 280 mile trip 140 miles each way so I was able to get some baselines with the engine oil temperature gauge running and I thought I'd share them with you here um, I will do a follow-up after this once we're into spring weather it gets above 80 degrees and I'm towing the trailer so that's probably going to be somewhere in the Memorial Day to July 4th uh, to see that follow up but when we pulled out and started on our trip it was the truck was garage kept at 50 degrees and as soon as we pulled out it was 17 degrees ambient temperature outside so as we got going five to six minutes in the coolant temperature was up to 197 after five to six minutes um, and the oil temp gauge just started to show movement so the bottom of the gauge is 100 degrees so as the coolant temp was almost up to temperature the oil gauge was just starting to move at the 10 minute mark engine coolant temperature was standard operating uh, temperature which on the gauge shows 210 I didn't bring my scanner to measure the or report the ECM temperature but the gauge on the dash show 210 at that 10 minute mark oil temp was 128 fast forward to 17 minutes it was 178 and it took every bit of 30 to 35 minutes to get to its first plateau which was about 185 degrees as we kept running at 65 to 70 miles an hour only to keep up with the state troopers that were passing us um, we would wind up uh, finding a plateau in the 194 to 196 range now towards the end of our trip when we were exiting to get to my son's house the end of the ramp we had to make a left hand turn and uh, it was a stop sign operated ramp with a truck stop right there so we had to sit at least a minute maybe 90 seconds or two minutes um, before I could make my left hand turn and from sitting there for that minute and a half 
the oil temp gauge uh, crept up to 200 degrees. So that was the first time that the oil temp had broke 196 in the entire drive. So clearly as you come to an idle and are sitting there, uh, the temperature does go and creep up. Oil pressure is at its low once the temperature is warmed up, etc. So we will do a baseline uh, once we start towing. Um, if it does get up there, you know, I think that's telling me that I probably want to go with the oil cooler plate that has the solenoid that kicks in somewhere around 185, 188. I don't want to be leveraging a cooler until I at least get to that temperature um, out of the two. But like I said, there will be a follow-up. I hope this project was useful and if you have an interest uh, that you'll tackle it. Any questions, you know, don't be shy to reach out in the comment section. And please, uh, trying to get started here. So if you would like and subscribe, and uh, we'll keep an eye out and see what our next project's going to be. Thanks. See you soon.